Unlocked, Uncensored. What up, everybody? This is Jason Lee, and this is Hollywood Unlocked, Uncensored. And what up? It's your girl, April Jones, and I'm in the building. Yo, it's DJ Damage. Let's get this show started. Okay, so before we get started, make sure you're subscribed on all platforms, iTunes, yep. iHeart, Google Play, Spotify, and of course, YouTube. Yeah. Share it with everybody, and uh, we are back in the building. So listen, I'm going to tell you, I was in New York, and I was laying in bed on my way to the airport, mm-hmm. and the um, Leaving Neverland popped up. Yeah. And it was already halfway through. I had to flip it through the channels. And I will have to say, I mean, I watched it as much as I could. And it just, I was so enraged. I just, because I just feel like at this point, besides, and I've talked about Me Too and all that other shit. I just feel Mm -hmm. like things have gotten so out of control now that there are, there's the money grabs, the civil suits, the um, killing of characters that are happening all over the fucking internet. And Michael Jackson now, may he rest in peace, has now found himself all in the middle of it again. Mm. Yeah. And so uh, never leaving that, leaving Neverland has now become a forgot or forgetting Neverland post on Oprah Winfrey.com or Oprah magazine, whatever the fuck, Oprah site. And it's just like, I don't know. I don't know what to think. It's just been really depressing. For me, it's been interesting seeing these media outlets like uh, HBO, who really nobody ever talks about now yeah. they come with a bang when you have something like leaving neverland or whatever what is it called surviving whatever the fuck Le- it's leaving called neverland is surviving our killing exactly now. so it's like you don't even <laughs> think about hbo until you have a big moment like this and i feel like they're capitalizing off of that now whether he did it or not i i don't know yeah i, I mean we won't so. know but i mean you know watching the docu- documentary on my own um man how did you feel when you seen it you know, did it feel genuine? I, I mean, yes. Coming when, yes, just like an outsider watching a documentary. Yes, I would say it did. Mm-hmm. It did feel like it could be believable. Um, I'm not saying that I believe that Michael did it, but it could. It, 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 you could feel like these people were being honest and telling the truth. You know, because how they spun it. It was like you know Wade and this other guy Jimmy were really speaking about Michael in such a compassionate way, speaking about him, not slandering or accusing like you would normally see documentaries, but more so like he was an amazing person. And, you know, we were, when he got another boy, I was, I was the jealous boy that wanted to be back in that position. And so it made you feel more comforted in like, wow, like you feel really bad for these young kids. And Mm -hmm. you really feel, you could really feel like Michael Jackson really did it. But at the same time, it's like, you got to remember who Michael Jackson was. And it's like, it's 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 one of those. So I felt really weird. I kind of still feel weird about it. But we it. all know you can sprinkle a little truth in a bowl full of shit. Yeah, yes. and make it taste normal. Right. And I it's just I, I, the problem that I'm having with all of it is, first of all, I it's so crazy with the surviving R. Kelly doc, with the leaving Neverland, right, with the Me Too movement, with the this the Time Is Up movement. I can't even listen to rape and molest like I did before. Yeah, because yeah, you don't fucking know who's. Now, now I'm listening to it like a forensic psychologist. Is the person's body language right? Is the person is the person's motivations right? I mean, mm. like at the end of the day, I feel like all of this is just making real victims of abuse um, have an even harder time of telling their story. Yeah. Because you don't really know what to accept anymore. And it's really crazy because on one hand, we're now, t- you know, with R. Kelly, first of all, they're now putting Chris Brown's picture in it too. Why? What? I saw a meme online where they put R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, Chris Brown. I seen that and too. And something else. And I'm like, what what, y'all going to drag Chris Brown into it now? <laughs> Yo. But this is this goes back to, I think I think uh, Bill Cosby was in there too. So it was Bill Cosby, Chris Brown. So they left out Harvey Weinstein and they put in Chris Brown. Well, that's the other conversation going on. We know mm. why is Oprah Winfrey talking to these people about Michael Jackson, but she's not talking to these people about her homeboy, Harvey Weinstein. All these photos of them have popped up. I'm disgusted by it all, but I'm glad today we have uh, Michael's, Michael Jackson's uh, niece, niece yeah. Brandy Jackson, coming yeah. in to talk about it. And I think we're going to just have to ask her every question that people want to know, yeah. including uh, what she feels about Oprah. Yeah, I'm interested mm. to hear what she has to say, yeah, honestly, because so. she's pretty much the key to the puzzle for me. It's well, just it's just sad because, like you said, Surviving R. Kelly, Lifetime said they want to do seven more seasons of shows uh, like that, right? No. So it's kind of like the Jesse Smollett situation. It's like you're trying to... That's season two. Yeah, pff, look, you're trying <laughs> to capitalize off people's... Fears and what people trauma. Basically, you're making money off of people's trauma and trying to create these events on your network so people tune in and try to have this connection with it. But it, it doesn't come from a genuine place. And mm. you think people did, and you think people in HBO wasn't sitting up and looking at the lifetime ratings when they yeah, saw the R. Kelly? Of course. Because when that R. Kelly surviving R. Kelly came out, 
We were in Vegas watching every fucking hour on repeat. They exactly. played it. That was the only thing playing on Lifetime. I have Golden Girls plays on repeat mm. on Lifetime. Mm -mm. They may play like seven or ten episodes, but this thing was playing all day, every day and, for the weekend. And then they put the Aaliyah movie before it. This okay. is what I'm saying. So people, Crazy. Have, people, people need to like take a step back a little bit from TV and social media. And like literally come become at peace with themselves. Let me tell and then you. wait, and then re-enter back into it because the spin that people put on it was social media. For us, we, you know, we do take a hard line on certain things. So like if, you know, for example, in the Jordan Woods and Chloe thing, I took a hard line that I didn't like betrayal, regardless of the Kardashians past, mm -hmm. regardless of whether or not Jordan was a young girl, regardless of Will and Jada Smith. I took a hard line on betrayal and I wrote that thing to the point to where the narrative was very anti-Jordan and I own it because that was the position that I wanted to take. So I know how the media works, how social media works. If they continually put an image or an idea in your face mm -hmm. and in your ear and on your social media and you're now consumed with it, you start to walk away and go, I can see how that would happen. Yep. And you really believe that you've arrived at your own thoughts, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Oh, no, I was just going to say that I'm just really happy that Instagram kind of broke down yesterday. We had that like <laughs> surge of like you couldn't Social media just was down. And I was like on my phone, you know, although I was like, is this, is your phone doing the same thing? I was I'm in happy. a state of panic. Yeah, but I was happy that it did that. Just because it's like, sometimes you just need to just have a fresh breath of air outside of the bullshit. And it's been a lot of bullshit happening. So, But we went from being shut down on Instagram and Facebook to trying to get back on Instagram and Facebook. I spent seven hours oh, trying to get try. back on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, see, that's ridiculous. Are you there? Is anybody there? They just need Nobody Instagram. Responded. Just shut your shit down for a week, please. No, but we got Mandatory sh shutdown for a week. Okay, so with everything in the news uh, regarding this whole Michael Jackson documentary, we have uh, his niece, Brandy Jackson. Woo! Yes. Hey, good Hi. morning. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you course. for being here. Thank you. So you're you're 37? I am, yeah. You look young. Thank look, you. You're a good 37. I'll take that as a compliment. That Thank is you. a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. Good old shea butter. So, <laughs> yes, absolutely. See? So it. it's so funny. Um, I met uh, Janet years ago and I said to her, uh, I really want to meet Catherine. I don't know what my only moment with Janet Jackson was telling her I want to meet Catherine <laughs> because she's like this. She's like this hero. You know, she created uh, the most famous uh, family, the most famous entertainer in the world. So uh, that's your grandmother. Yeah. And she's a sweetheart. So, I mean, you wanting to meet her. Makes sense. Yeah. She's such a genuine person. And they said she's because she's a um, Jehovah's Witness. They said, I don't know, recently, but I'm mean, not too long ago. She was still going door to door. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. You actually you knock on the door Saturday morning. You open Catherine Jackson in there. You going to convert. Hello. Yeah, she 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 never dropped it. And the other funny thing is, is um, she's so modest. She didn't want to go door to door. And I'm not going to lie. She she drives a, a big body Benz. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. But she would scale it down to a Corolla because she wanted to she didn't want to be driving around knocking door to door in her big body bends. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting the way that she, you know, gets around and just tries to be part of the community. Yeah. I don't think I'd be able no. to handle seeing Catherine Jackson in a Toyota Pro. I'd be <laughs> like, come on girl, you know, you got coin. All right. So your father's Jackie Jackson. He is. Yeah. So, so Jackie Jackson, is that the one that Oprah used to say she was yes. in love with? Yes. Oh. Um, and that was like her thing when she, cause she had interviewed Michael back in the day. Right. And she had revealed that. Um, and we'll talk about Oprah for sure. Okay. Um, but she, but mm -hmm. so Jackie was the one that Oprah was in love with. How yeah. was it growing up as Jackie's daughter? Um, well, you know, I don't know any different though. That's just my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, when you see other fathers and other families, you kind of get to understand the difference, but like any other dad, he's just a good father. Um, so I feel blessed to have been raised by him. Mm -hmm. So how was it growing up around because your aunts and uncles are Janet Jackson, Tito, Randy, right. I mean, and Michael. How was it growing up around that family? Uh, that It's your family, yeah, but around and, those people. I mean, in a similar answer, I don't know any different. Hmm. Um, when, you know, you see them on TV as these big entertainers, but at home, they're just family members. They're hmm. all very normal, very sweet and kind and caring. So they're not moonwalking through the kitchen. No, I mean, they do walk around singing and, you know, you'll see them dancing, but whose family members don't do that? Right. You know what I mean? That's a normal thing. Mm -hmm. Did you see them often? Because, you know, a lot of those people are busy. Yeah, you know, so there are a lot of us and we have these mandatory family days. Oh, nice. I don't care what you're doing, where you are in the world, you need to stop and come to family time. Oh, so, nice. yeah, and we had to implement that because, like you said, everybody is very busy um, and might be out of the country for years at a mm -hmm. time. Um but there are a lot of us, so we kind of rotate. You might see this group of this side of the family for mm -hmm. a while, and then you'll see that side of the family mm -hmm. for a while. Um, so where's the meeting place? Catherine's house? Yeah, Grandma's house. Hey. Absolutely. But then we would switch, and for family days, it would be at every, at like a different uncle or a different aunt's house every time. Who was the best cook in the family? 
My grandmother. Mm, hands down. Absolutely. But my dad can throw down. Mm. But but are you <coughs> is your fa- I don't see your family cooking. I see caterers. Oh no. Caterers. No. I see staff with no. white gloves and uh-uh. tuxedos and none of that. No, no, no. We have our barbecues, we have our cookouts. Really? Yeah. So for occasionally Gary. for you know certain things like Thanksgiving, if um it's a little last minute and we don't have time to do that, then yeah, they'll have somebody come and cater. We do do that, but yeah. no, our family throws down. So now when, when when they had messaged me, my team had messaged me that we were going to interview a Jackson. I was like, okay, well, we have to do some type of Ancestry.com report because <laughs> the Jackson family is typically very private True. and don't come out and speak. You That's don't true. see them. You don't hear them unless they're entertaining. So how, how did you have a family meeting where you were like, I'm about to go out and start talking? Or how does... No. Um, this one, this situation, I'm probably one of the most private and quiet people in the family. Um, but this situation struck a chord with me. And I couldn't sit quiet. Uh, I have a personal relationship with Wade and his family. I've known them for approximately 10 years. And to see what they're trying to do and the things that they're trying to say, I couldn't sit back and be silent. So for those listening and wondering what we're talking about, you dated, we all know Wade Robson because of you. Oh, okay. I mean, you dated him. Yeah. He then was brought in and around Michael Jackson. Right. And now um, he's a part of this documentary that... Um, is is very unlike any of the other documentaries that have dropped where people have taken a really hard line against the person that they're talking about. This is not just because he's an icon, but because he was found innocent um, of all the charges back in the day. Right. Talking about Michael and the sex abuse charges. And because um, this person actually testified, Wade Robson, your ex-boyfriend, testified in support of Michael exactly. and defended him when he was acquitted back in the 90s. So there's a whole bunch to get into. So I, I am thankful that you came today so we can kind of unpack it all. Yeah, and I appreciate you for having me. I, I really do. Of course. So now the documentary, uh, leaving is it Leaving Neverland? Yes. Yeah, I'm confused. So did he, did, because you said that um, Wade was introduced to Michael through you. No, it wasn't through It me. wasn't. Okay, because when I watched the documentary, okay, so he basically met him being a dancer in Australia. Correct. Okay, that's, okay, yes. thank you. But then okay. was when he was brought around through never, was he already in there with Michael? Like, was he already yes. connected to Michael? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So my uncle introduced us. My uncle had already known Wade and his family. Okay. okay. And yeah. Wade had developed a crush on me. Okay. So uh, let me, I'll briefly explain. Yes. Um, he and I met in 1991, approximately. We had done, <clears throat> excuse me, an LA gear photo shoot, right. as well as the black or white video. Yeah. We had done those together. And he started to develop a little crush. So he asked my uncle if he could maybe set up a situation where we could get to know each other better. And, and how old were you then? Uh, approximately nine or 10. Okay. <clears throat> he and I were both born in 82. I'm just a little older than him. So this was approximately 91 when mm-hmm. we met. And um, so he was like, what, seven? Uh, when we met, he was about nine or ten as well. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I remember that's a that. serious crush, young man. Well, you know how it is, like s- schoolyard type thing. We didn't go to the same school, but this is we mm-hmm. met on the same set. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's you know like a puppy love situation. It was just a very normal thing. Um, so my uncle introduced or brought us both to the ranch, and we spent about a week there getting to know each other. At the end of this trip is when Wade asked me very sweetly if I would be his girlfriend. So from that point on is when we started dating. But again, let me stress that it was a very age appropriate relationship. It wasn't like we were having this sexual relationship at you know, 11, 12 years old that you know, progressed later mm-hmm. through our relationship. So how long were you guys together? Uh, you know, it, approximately nine years or so. Mm-hmm. Um, we broke up around 2000 or 2001, something so, to so that. So while you were teenagers, through exactly. your teen years. Yeah. It's time for another Hollywood hookup. Ladies, do you want to try on the most comfortable shoes you have ever worn in your entire life? Soft. So soft. And get this. These shoes are made from recycled plastic, okay? And they're so comfortable and stylish. Oh, my God. Um, I have a pair, all right? I'm going to get me another pair because they are the most comfortable shoes that I have in my closet right now. That's two per. They're stylish. They're classic. um, And they're so comfortable. Like I said, they have the sneaker. They have the flat. They have the point shoe and the loafer, which is the one that I have. That's all stuff. Simple and cute. And these Rothy shoes are machine washable. What shoes can you wash in your washing machine, guys? So you could just throw it in the washing machine? You just machine. throw it in there, wash them, and they come out clean and still comfortable. I love my Rothy's, and I know you guys will love Rothy's too. Right now, Rothy's has an amazing deal for my listeners, okay? So use the code UNLOCK to get free shipping with no minimum, okay? Free shipping and returns slash exchanges 
on your Rothy shoes. And trust me, you guys are not going to want to return these. All right. Go to Rothy's.com. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S.com. And enter unlock to get your new favorite flats and free shipping. Just like okay? that. Okay, it's no brainer. They are shoes that are comfortable, stylish, and sustainable, guys. Go get yourself a pair today at rothys.com. Promo unlocked. Get this deal while it lasts. Okay, so I'm confused. So, like, when you start dating Wade and he's you're you're around a lot and he's around a lot. Yeah. Okay, so how did it go from Wade and Michael Jackson being his everything to where we are right now? You know, honestly, it makes no sense. I have to be completely honest with you. Um, but when you look at, when you, when you go back and you look at the history and the timeline, you'll start to see things like, um, of course, he was always supporting Michael. Michael passed away in 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, then Wade starts to talk about a breakdown that he had. Um, and it was a financial breakdown. He mentions that previously when he did the Today Show, I think in, 2013 mm -hmm. or 2015. Um, he had also gone after the Cirque du Soleil show. He had claimed that that was his. He had done interviews talking about it. And then the estate. The Cirque du Soleil, the Michael show? Exactly, in mm. Las Vegas. Um, and then he didn't get it. He wasn't, he was up for it. He didn't get it. And that, you know how it is in the entertainment industry. You announce something that you're doing and then it's not happening. That's, that's not a good look, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that those things kind of spiraled him out of control. In addition to the fact that he had burned a lot of bridges in the, in the industry, he was having a hard time finding work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Michael was his lifeline. That was his friend, his, his mentor, his everything. So when Michael passed, he didn't know what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. As far as how do I make money? How do I operate in life? All of my jobs are being shut down. Was he making money with Michael or through Michael up to the time Michael died? Uh, not necessarily with him, but my uncle was kind of assisting him if he needed help with something, if he needed new equipment. If he needed, he wanted to be a director, so my uncle bought him camera equipment. Oh, I see what's you, going on. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like a, a parent. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. your parent dies, you kind of feel a little lost. Mm -hmm. And I think they even mentioned something like that in the documentary or an interview that his mother said, Wade didn't cry like this when his own father died. They tried to put a spin on it and make it like it, Michael was his lover. Mm -hmm. it, this was just a, a very important person in his life. Mm -hmm. You know, my uncle is... He's a, he's not like anybody you've ever met before. Well, I've told the story. I don't know if I've told the story on this show, but I've told the oh. story. I've had a conversation with Michael one time when I was 15. And I said that basically when I was going through um, foster care and stuff, uh, I was in a group home and Michael had actually, there'd been a school shooting in my neighborhood. Okay. They had killed all these kids, shot these kids, shot the teachers at a school. This guy had blew up his car and then shot them all with a machine gun. Wow. It was one of the first school shootings ever. And we didn't have social media back mm -hmm. then, so we just had the news. I remember coming home and then the counselor sitting us down and talking us through it. And I remember a few days later, we hear on the radio, Michael Jackson is on the freeway coming to Stockton. We're like, Michael Jackson ain't coming to Stockton. <laughs> And he actually came and he, he visited all the kids in the school really? and encouraged them to find courage to keep mm -hmm. coming to school, mm -hmm. told them that God was with them and that's why they were alive, uh, paid for all the medical bills of all the kids wow. in the hospital, went to the hospitals to visit all the gunshot victims, paid for all the funerals, didn't get any recognition, but didn't want it. actually tried to sneak in and out. And so for me, that was just like, this was compassion on a level I had never seen. Like right. totally selfless, had no reason to come. Michael Jackson, the biggest star in the world, had no reason to stop everything and come to Stockton to do this for, for these kids. And it was a grieving community where we were all trying to figure out what the hell just happened. Right. Because this person had targeted a school with all Asian, most predominantly Asian kids. And it, uh, he was in the war. So he had mm. little, little war figures in his hotel, blew up the car. The kids all run out to see what happened. And he was on the playground with the AK-47. Wow. So I say that that was my example. So years mm. later, when I get out the group home, I'm like trying to find Michael Jackson. Cause I'm like, <laughs> This is com not even because it was just the biggest star in the world, but because I had never witnessed that level of compassion right. mm -hmm. and didn't understand it. And I think I was intrigued. So I I, I uh, called his assistant every day. And then finally one day he called. Really? That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so when he called, I will never forget two things. One, that Michael talked like a nigga. He was, <laughs> what's up? You, you call it. And I was like, <laughs> what? You know? Yeah. Pe people don't know that. I'm happy you got to experience that. And the other thing is he was very in tuned with, the conversation and uh, just the gratitude of somebody that actually wanted to reach out to him for just being himself. Right. And see what you've just described is exactly who he is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to ask you because a lot of what we see about Michael Jackson is from the outside looking in like right. from TV, from media, you being in the family, what is Michael like? What is his characteristic? What is his personality, uh, personality like? 
he, you know, I have, to, I'm going to start with saying what I said before. He's not like anybody you've ever met. I've yeah. never met another person that I can say, he reminds me of my uncle, Michael. This, this man is honestly, he's, he's a special, special guy. And just how he was saying that he's very compassionate and he's never mm -hmm. seen that level of compassion. Mm -hmm. That's who he is regularly. Okay. And he will surprise you with that every time you see him. It's something that's hard to digest because it's not common in this, in this world. It, he's really just from a different planet, I have to be honest with you. And that's kind of why when people look at him, they view him as this like cartoon character, yeah. like he's Mickey Mouse or something, because you're, it's not something you can relate to. Well, I think it's because he is so iconic. I mean, there isn't another, there hasn't been another human being that has been that magnified that too, yeah. and yeah. that huge. I mean, to, to the point to where even when you're on the phone with him and it sounds like him and you know it's him, it, you're having like this weird experience because you are so taken aback by how as big as he is on to you in your head, he's yeah. just so normal on the phone. Exactly. One thing I remember he said, because I was living with my mom at the time and I had come out the group mm. home and I was just like, I didn't really, I didn't really know myself because I hadn't been, I didn't had the freedom of interacting with the community because I was in a group home. You get right. in a bus, yeah. you go to the school, you come back, you're with counselors and people. And then you go, it's just, that was the every day. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, he said, when were you born? And I told him, and he said, I can feel your aura through the phone. I mean, this is how in tune Michael That's Jackson was on the phone. I never talked to him again after that. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting because I had asked to go to Neverland. I was like, yo, can I come up to Neverland? He was like, well, you know, we don't know. We'll, we'll try to make it happen. But clearly he didn't call me back. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's like, so, nope. So now Neverland that had this iconic, fun place in For our stage. head of where kids um, and and their families, let's right. be clear, it's not just you drop your kids off at the door and leave. Exactly. Um, Go has now been become tarnished with this whole documentary. So when you heard about it, when you heard about the documentary, what were your immediate thoughts? I was infuriated. Mm -hmm. um, initially, that was my first emotion. I was so mad. And then I became so sad because I knew the motive of what was happening. And to try to tarnish him and try to tear him down in such a way, somebody that only wanted to do good and do right by people, it was so sad to me. It was devastating. Mm -hmm. um, just how you said, there is plenty of kids and plenty of people who would go to the ranch. Even the schools in Santa Barbara would take the kids to the ranch. I want to say something like once a month, mm -hmm. just to have a field trip, mm -hmm. just to let the kids get out and do right. something. Um, and, and plenty of kids were doing this. They were sick kids. They were mm -hmm. inner city schools constantly coming to the ranch. This was a place of peace and joy. There, this wasn't a place of molestation and abuse. And that's how it's being labeled now. So what? besides uh, Wade obviously saying, you know, and accusing Michael of certain things, there were a lot of other kids that obviously, you know, said certain things about Michael Jackson. What do you think the motive was behind that for, for them outside of, uh, outside of outside Wade? Outside of Wade, yeah. yeah. So, and I don't mean to, um, I don't mean to correct you, but mm -hmm. I have to say it wasn't a lot of kids okay. who, who said that. Um, there's a handful. Okay, ha and handful. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I no, just no, have no. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, R. Kelly, there's a lot of girls. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's still, I mean, right now if I open the door, there's one outside. Yeah. I mean, everywhere. yeah, it was like four or five from, from what I saw on the, on the yes. documentary. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and I'm happy you brought that up. Yeah. One of the kids that I'd like to start with is one of the first kids who this was centered around, Jory mm -hmm. Chandler in mm -hmm. 1993. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that people don't know with that suit is in 93, you could have a civil suit before a criminal suit. Yeah. You can't do that today. Mm -hmm. Today you have to be criminally charged with something and then you can be civilly charged with something for a financial reason. Right. Um, so it, at that time, what happened was they had come to him, asked him for this large amount of money. He said no. And when you say they, the family. The family, okay. the Chandler family. Because it was, it, it was always the parents. Exactly. Okay, because this was the kid that, um, was this the kid that the, the case eventually went to court, right? This one didn't, and okay. that's why this one is, to me, very significant. Okay, okay. Um, and it's the first one. It's, it's kind of the one that set the precedent and set the tone. So, um, you know, they came to him. He said no. Then they said, well, we'll file a suit. He said, file a suit. Go ahead. He was ready to fight. But they came at him with a civil suit of mm. 20 million or something to that effect, something like 20 million. Well, the insurance company paid that. My uncle didn't pay that. The insurance company said, we're just going to go ahead and pay this. So they paid it which automatically made my uncle Did they look, pay the 20 million? They paid exactly. 20 million. They paid 20 just, million exactly. for it to go away? Yes. Well, no, no, not for it to go away. They paid 20 million to, to cancel this civil, the civil suit that was arising mm -hmm. and they were pre preparing for a criminal suit. Mm -hmm. So that's what my uncle was gearing up for. After the kids got the 20 million or the family got the 20 million, Jordy refused to testify. He said, all my dad wanted was money. I, I remember that. And he, that he, Michael he came, never came did forward anything. and said that, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
and that Michael never did anything. Mm -hmm. So he refused to press charges. That's why there was never a criminal suit in 93. And just this is interesting to note. Mm. This is after they wow. received the money. Exactly. So wow. there was no reason for him to lie and retract. And exactly. that wasn't in the documentary. Exactly. Okay. okay. They don't talk about that. And, and a lot of people either weren't born at this time, mm -hmm. weren't old enough at this time, or don't remember. You know, this is something from 93, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so... I think that it's very important that people understand that because that's what sets the precedent. So yeah. how was Michael after that experience? He w personally, he was exactly the same. He was still, but I mean, was he damaged? Like, was he, was he, was he hurt? Was he, he was hurt. Absolutely. But it didn't stop him from being who he was. He wasn't going to let them damage him or have any ill will towards children or to stop doing good for people. So he didn't stop being caring or exactly. having people around. No, not okay. at all. It, it hurt him, but he wasn't going to stop. Looking at how everything is transpiring now, do you wish he kind of did change up a few of his methods or how no. he went about things? No. Okay. Uh, I feel bad for him that the people who are doing what they're doing to mm -hmm. him have come out and changed and, and that they're doing this. Um, but I am thankful because he's set an example for me. No matter what happens in your life, don't change. Absolutely. Always be genuine and just keep fighting. Um, and I think that that's an important lesson. And so, so where was Wade when all this was happening? Was Wade, or Wade was around. He was, mm -hmm. he was around. And so that's one of the things that I. And let me say, I don't, I think Wade's a fucking liar. Personally, I think Wade's a liar. This is me speaking and I haven't spoke to you before today. No, that's true. I, I, I caught it. I haven't seen the whole documentary because part of me as a, whatever you want, journalist, whatever, I want to know it all so I can be uh, <clears throat> well informed before I have an opinion. But right. like. I just, first of all, the, there's, they seem so, well, Wade just seems so disingenuous. Having seen him over the years, um, whether working with Brittany or working with whoever, or right. working with whoever he's working in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, number two, Michael is dead. Exactly. Like, Michael is dead. So I understand if if something happened uh, to you and you wanted to work through it, there's, a, I think, a therapeutic process. There's a, with your family process. But what is the purpose? I didn't understand the purpose of a documentary. Well, uh, their purpose is to try to get their lawsuit back. The, you know, they filed a lawsuit in 2013 or 2015 for the, the number that is reported is something like $1.5 billion. For a civil suit. For $1.5 Yeah. Man. Yes. And this exactly. is these two guys. Yeah. So they. So, yeah, they did that initially and that was thrown out. Mm -hmm. So now they need to convince the world that this needs mm. to this that the courts need to be on their side. But the side. craziest part about it is, like you said, you know Wade, and for people like me who've never encountered him, and you're watching this documentary, yeah, you could really feel compelled that they are really being honest yes. because you know it's not like a normal type of documentary where it's like you're watching R. Kelly and these women are slandering and attacking right. and accusing. It's almost like they still fi are finding this way to say, well, you know, this man was so kind and he was compassionate and but but i was in love with him i was the jealous kid so it's all it almost makes you feel like wow like right wow and, you and really went through did. something and you know so it's man i don't know it's just, no i understand and that's part of my frustration is i can't get mad at individuals who right. watch this and believe what they're saying right um this is what's thrown in your face and right. then you have the media who's who's keeping everything very one-sided and mm -hmm. not not giving any light to the other side um Oprah, I'm just going to touch it really quick. Wait, before you go there, because okay. we got to unpack all of that. Okay. Let me be, clarify something. One, I don't know Wade personally. He's he's not the type of trash I would associate myself with. <laughs> okay. What I'm saying is having, I can watch how people move. I've, <clears throat> I've been molested. I don't want to keep being around my molester. I don't give a fuck what Ferris wheel we're on right. or what ride we're going to or how mm. much popcorn or monkeys we're playing with. But what the problem is, is that when you're around famous or rich people, you do live a life that is very different than mm -hmm. what Leroy on the corner is living. Right. Your access is different. The people uh -huh. you're around are different. If you're an aspiring choreographer, you're around the best dancer in the fucking world all day long. You feed off of that. And if for whatever reason they die or they don't want you around anymore or certain boundaries start to pop up, you start to feel a certain way. I still want to have access to my friend. But I also think there are people who are different too because I know people who have been molested and they have been stuck around molesters. So I don't think, it's just a, it's a, just a touchy subject to touch on because not everybody handles situations but the same. But I don't think Wade was stuck around Michael Jackson. Well, he, I'm not I'm not saying, I wasn't saying to say- No, but I mean like, saying you know, I'm okay. saying like, say if you have a person who lives in a house and their stepfather is molesting them. Okay. They're stuck around their stepfather because their stepfather's with their mother. So you're in the house. Right. This person was not 
forced to live with Michael, was not forced to travel with Michael, was not forced to profit off of Michael. It's a, to me, it's very different. I just don't, I, I mean, you look at the body language. To me, I don't know him personally, but I look at it like, bro, come on, really? And he's dead, that part. Oprah Winfrey. Nah, I don't know what else to say. Oprah. <laughs> well, and I was just going to, I was just going to touch on, on Oprah, you know, saying back to what you were saying as far as yeah. people believing this. Yes. When Oprah comes on and she's supporting this immediately, you you don't have anything else to think except for this must be true. Yeah. Right. If Oprah's reporting it. And that's part of what made me so upset is that the media wasn't, they weren't looking at this as a whole picture. They're looking at this as a, as, as as though it's a factual documentary. This is a one-sided film. Right. And that's what made me so mad. And then they're talking about him as though he had been known to be guilty. He was found not guilty on 10 counts in 2005. WikiLeaks just released the FBI documents that people don't even know WikiLeaks is doing this. It's WikiLeaks that put that stuff out. A 10-year investigation on Michael from the FBI reveals absolutely nothing to the point where they had to drop it. That started in 1993. Wade was around him at that time. If inappropriate behavior had occurred, this would have come up. And that's true because the FBI has a 99% conviction rate. So if you're doing a 10-year investigation, that stands out to me. You're doing an investigation for 10 years and you find nothing where you have to drop it by the FBI, there's something there. Exactly. And so so let's talk about Oprah. I mean, Oprah, um, to the black community and to the world, is this iconic figure that she's the she's the auntie that we trust. She's right. our mom. She's mm -hmm. raised a lot of people. And when Oprah says it, it's true. Mm. What, what does the family think about Oprah having been the one person to secure a one-on-one -on -one interview with Michael that yeah. I've never really seen anybody else do after a certain period in his career, and then to come back full circle and do this interview? You know, I, I can't speak for every person in my family and say what they think, but I know as a whole we're disgusted mm -hmm. and we're very disappointed, especially in journalism. If you want to give both sides a chance, if you want to give them a voice, do it, but be fair. Mm. That's, that's all that we could ask for. We're not asking for her to take our side over theirs. We're asking you to be fair. And so for that reason, we're very disappointed. What methods do you wish she would have done, you know, to make it more fair? How would you see it? Interview how would you like to see side, her to take though, it? Right? Absolutely. Interview the other side. Yeah, interview the other side. And, and look into Wade and James. Their story has changed so many times. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very one-sided and biased. Even their mother has put out interviews that contradict what they're saying today, that they moved here when he was eight turning nine, but he was molested from seven to 14. Everything is just constantly changing to fit mm. this narrative that they're trying to tell. And it's sad to me because people don't know the facts. But I know she did say like even, you know, she was saying that Oprah was saying like, I don't know, you know, what it is or if, if this happened, but I know that this would be great, you know, for people who have been, I think it's a good documentary for people who have been molested to see this But, but this I, film. I, I know how to stack the room you know? and Oprah's really, okay. So when all the rumors were t out there about Tyler Perry being gay, mm -hmm. uh -huh. she did an interview with Tyler Perry and filled the room with a bunch of men and pictures of their perpetrator or pictures of them as little boys mm -hmm. who had been molested and then Tyler took the stage to share how he'd been molested and it really became a we ain't talking about Tyler being gay no more not that he is I don't know what he is but yeah. uh it became about Tyler being a victim of child molest and that became a conversation this room that she interviewed them instead of it being investigative journalism where you're trying to piece together a story that may in the end show out to not be true because you've heard from everybody. Exactly. She set a room with a bunch of people who've been molested and a stage with guys who had alleged that they were being molested by Michael and had this conversation. But what I found to be un Oprah like was when she went on um, Oprah mm -hmm. magazine and they posted yes. saying goodbye to Michael one more time or one last time. What did you think about that? I honestly felt like this is it. The um, public is going to play judge and jury on Michael and a lot of it is gonna be based off of this documentary and Oprah's mouth. Mm -hmm. And it, it just made me sick. It's time for another Hollywood hookup. So I don't know about you, Damage, but you know, when I'm traveling a lot and you know, we trying to keep these bodies looking fit. That's right. The only way that I can do so is by using open fit. Oh yeah, me too. Which is bringing something new that allows you to sweat in the comfort of your own home, hotel, or wherever you are. Sweat it out in privacy. That's it. It's a brand new, super simple streaming service that allows you to work out in the comfort of your home. Okay, right in All the middle right? of your living room. Or wherever you are. They offer amazing trainers and amazing classes. Those classes that allow you to sculpt your body, classes for you to lose weight if you want to, if you want to gain muscle, whatever it is that you want to do, they Everything. offer it. All the options for you. You have access anywhere, anytime, on your computer, mm -hmm. on your TV, 
smartphone, you name it. Okay. It's there. And guess what? You can lose up to 15 pounds <laughs> just in the first 30 days, guys. That's a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. Got to move the weight. That's it. OpenFit has changed the way that I work out. So with my code unlocked, you can join me on my fitness journey, personalized just for you. So use my code unlocked. Start using OpenFit for your journey to a healthier lifestyle. I'm checking out her weight life. Please journey. do. And right now, during Probably. this Open Fit 30 Day Challenge, my listeners get a special extended 30 day free trial membership to Open Fit, where you can lose up to 15 pounds in just 30 days when you text unlocked to 303030. That's 30 30 30. You will get full access to Open Fit, all right? All the workouts and nutrition information, totally free. Who doesn't want that? Again, that's just texting unlocked to 303030. 30, 30, 30. That is 30, 30, 30. 30. We have a court system, a, ju a judicial system. Mm -hmm. My uncle went through it. He was harassed. He was embarrassed and humiliated, but he did what he had to do. And he was found not guilty. And I think that that needs to be respected. And I was pissed off that she would post such a thing. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I was, I can't even describe to you. I don't get very upset, but this one floored me. I want to say it made me more upset than the actual documentary. Well, I'll, I'll say that, and, and just for mm -hmm. people that don't really remember the whole trial process, there was uh, a kid who had described Michael's genitalia to the, this went as far as to the extent that they photographed and went yes. and looked yeah. at his genitalia. Embarrassing. So on the, on just on the surface of just, trying to humanize the conversation. We're talking about being um, indicted on charges that you can't even understand because you love and help kids. Generally, like I said, genuinely, like I said, even in my own hometown, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is a real, this isn't a contrived story. You can go back and look at the Stockton record and see that this happened um, where he came and he did all this for these kids that he had no reason to do that for. This is somebody who, I mean, there was Ryan White. Wasn't that the kid right. that had AIDS? Yes. And how close he was to Michael. Yes. Macaulay Culkin, who was close to Michael. Yes. Um, and there were there were other kids that we all knew about that were close to Michael who have not come out and said anything negative or in support of. But why do you, do you think the motivator for these two guys is just playing out money? Absolutely. 100%. Um, and one, there is a, another child named Brett Barnes that I think, I, I feel bad mentioning his name because all he wants to do is just live his life quietly and just mm -hmm. do him. And I respect that. But I do need to bring him up because of the fact that they bring him up in the documentary as listing him as one of the boys who replaces them. Um, they say that they were replaced by Brett Barnes and Macaulay Culkin as Michael's new lovers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brett Barnes is adamant that nothing has ever happened to him and he's upset that they're using his name in this context. He wants his name taken out of the film but HBO is still continuing to air it. Mm. And that's disrespectful. You're disrespecting people's personal wishes and what they are personally saying. Nothing has ever happened. In your personal experience ever, did you ever think the interactions between Mike and some children was ever unusual or no. No, never. a little and that's, weird? No, but I understand that from the public's point of view, mm -hmm. that it's a weird situation to have this grown man interacting with children. I get that. But when you're actually around it and you see him, mm -hmm. it's it's something you you, can, you immediately understand once you meet him. He's a child himself. Okay. Um, one of the stories that I tell is we would have these family days, like mm -hmm. I mentioned, and the adults would sit together at one table and the kids would sit together at another table. He would always sneak away from the adult table and come sit at the kid table just because he wanted to be engaged in what we were talking about. He could relate to us. And he wants to play hide and go seek and tag and all of those sort of things. And my grandmother would always be like, Michael, come get back over here. We're, we have to finish this conversation. So he's very childlike in that sense. But never did that come off like unusual, no. strange. Like with him traveling it. with different kids and having them no. come on tour with him and being okay. No. And, and, I, and again, I understand that from mm -hmm. an outsider, it sounds mm -hmm. weird. Yeah. But I have to tell you, when you're around it, it's not weird at all. He's, he's not this weird person. It's just not something that society is used to. And I have to say, there's another thing that this reminds me of, mm -hmm. and I don't know what y'all's personal opinion is on it, but I'm going to touch on it. Um, I, sometimes you see things on social media where a father is being criticized for kissing his son, mm -hmm. yeah. hugging his son or being loving to his son. I think that's wrong. How dare you condemn a father for being loving to his son? Mm -hmm. I, at the, we contradict ourselves in five seconds by saying that father doesn't love his son. He doesn't do anything for him. But this man who's hugging and, and being emotional is wrong and inappropriate. And I think that that's the same sort of mentality that Michael is getting. There's nothing wrong with hanging around children. 
people think that because they automatically assume that something inappropriate is happening. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where the problem lies. But mm. where were the parents? And this is my thing. If, if the parents are, because I saw a little bit of the documentary. You saw more of it yeah, than I did. Yeah. What were the parents saying? Where were they if they were so concerned or so? They were around. They said they were around and they, the parents were starstruck. Yeah. They were saying they were starstruck. And, you know, one woman who, which was Wade's mom, was saying, you know, <coughs> she left her husband. I mean, he pretty much hung himself because she left with her kids and moved from Australia over here. And, and he, the, the husband was like, you, are you crazy? And she at the time said, no, she thought she was doing what was best for her family. But when she looks back on it, she realizes that she was starstruck. You know, she it, I believe these parents were obviously more in love with Michael than the kids. And the kids just happened to fall in love with him because of the parents. So the parents are partially to blame mm. if they want to sit here and say, say this. So if people so people so they understand this, we're saying that it's about money and they're saying, well, Michael's dead. How are they going to get money? Michael has an estate. Exactly. And the estate, um, Michael, at the time he yeah. died, owned the Beatles catalog. The estate, they've since, I think, liquidated that or somehow. Right. Yeah. So the estate is worth a tremendous amount of money. Right. Mm. And so even though Michael's dead, they would still be able to try to pursue money against the estate. That's what they're trying to do. Okay. And so for people that are not understanding how this could work and say, oh, well, Michael's dead. Well, why would they come up now? Because they're not going to get any money. Do you foresee coming soon a civil lawsuit? Yes, okay. I do foresee it. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not speaking on anything that I've been told. It's just, yeah. I do foresee it. That's mm -hmm. what their goal is. Uh, they tried it before it got thrown out and now they need to convince the world that this is something that's a possibility. Um, so that is, and my understanding is a few nights ago, Dan Reed did an interview um, trying to attack some of the things that I had said. And in that interview, he ended it by saying, Wade and James are going to be suing the estate and everybody needs to back off and leave them alone, is basically what he was saying. So he kind of confirmed it himself, mm. the director. Of and, and the, the estate's family. filed a hundred million dollar lawsuit against HBO. Correct. And for them, it's is it, it's not about money. or no. what What is it about? Is it about just shutting down this documentary? Is it about protecting Michael's image or is it all of that? You know, I can't speak for the estate, but I, I imagine that it's it's got mostly to do with um, the biasness of this documentary. It's not fair mm -hmm. and nobody's going to sit by and watch them do this. It's not okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, sometimes you just have to, there has to be repercussions for actions and that's the repercussion that you do to a business. You have to file a lawsuit. So Catherine, why has she been silent? You know, my grandmother is, she's an older, older woman and she's fought a lot of battles. This she shouldn't be fighting any battles. And I'm sorry that this is even happening mm -hmm. where she has to even consider fighting this battle. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that she stays out of it just because of her age. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need it for her health. We want her to stay around and live as long as she can. I don't want my grandmother having any further complications or anything of that nature mm -hmm. due to something like but this. But she's aware of it and she hasn't seen it though. I don't know if she's seen it, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. I, I didn't, when I see her, I, I don't bring it up. I just try to keep it family and keep it light. I don't even want to bring this up to her. Does she ever vocalize how, like, what is her understanding of how the world could be so cruel to somebody who's been so nice? You know, with my grandmother, she's been around for a long time and she's seen the times. She understands what it is. Mm. She knows what it is. This is nothing new for us. We've been fighting battles since, they've been fighting battles since before I was born. And like you said, I'm 37. Mm. This is nothing new. I know this to be a fact since I was five years old. Um, so for me, this is a newer situation, but not for her. Mm, mm. And, and you also have to remember that when the Jacksons were on tour, they couldn't walk through the front door when they were kids. They couldn't walk through the front door of a lot of the places they were performing. They had to go in the back, use different bathrooms, use drink out of different fountains. This, this wasn't, you know, this wasn't in the height of segregation or anything, but this was still happening and still occurring. So she knows how her sons have been treated mm -hmm. and the battles that they've been fighting their whole life. Mm. I don't want to cut you off. I want to talk more about Wade. When's the last time you talked to Wade? So actually the last time I spoke to him was after my uncle passed in 2009. Mm. But previous to that, I hadn't spoken to him since we broke up around 2000 or 2001. When y'all were together, did you ever see characteristics of him maybe being a liar or somebody to do something that just benefits him? Or did yes, you see any of those? That's how he is. He's mm. very narcissistic. And I'm going to touch back on something you said in just a moment or you asked. Um, but he is, he's a very narcissistic person. Okay. He's never apologized or been sorry for anything. Even when he, he knows he's wrong, he'll never apologize. Um, he doesn't care who he hurts. That's just who he is. One of the things I'd like to mention is in 2009, a few days after my uncle mm -hmm. passed, mm -hmm. his mother called me, Wade's mother. Okay. She said to me, you know, it's been a long time since we've spoken. We haven't seen each other for years. We miss you. We should have lunch. 
And I was just kind of turned off by this because we didn't end on a good note. You know, mm -hmm. he had cheated on me very badly with multiple people. Um, so I didn't, th these weren't people that I wanted to be associating with. I was polite to her, but I told her, you know, no, thank you. We don't need to get together. Mm -hmm. She asked for one last request. Could I please hook her back up with Paris Prince and Blanket? Because she felt like they should, the kids should be with her and the Robsons. She said that she was their godmother and that Michael didn't want the kids with my grandmother. That Michael would want the kids to be with them. So he made her the godmom. That's what she's trying. That's what she that's was what trying she to claim. In her head? She was trying Wait, to claim mom. that to me, and that's I, I can't tell you how far from the truth that is. All she wanted to do was figure out how to get back, back in with in. them. Their lifeline had been taken, and she needed to figure out how to stay attached. But that seemed like how mm. that kind of seemed like what Wade was trying to do too was why he was so upset was is that he was trying to find exactly. his place but back this, with this, Michael. This is what I said earlier. So it's hard for people who are in. Tacoma, Washington, or North Dakota, or these flyover <laughs> states that see nothing but polar bears and fucking deers running <laughs> across the street to understand that when you're next to somebody who's rich, powerful, and has access and influence, and mm -hmm. you may, I mean, look at some of the people that we're around, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I'm friends with somebody that the world reveres, but I don't see it. I see it just as like, you may see your uncle. It's just my friend. It's a yeah. regular person. When you're in it, though, you're profiting, you're benefiting, everything. Like, you, you, you're you living a certain lifestyle. You lose that. You want that back. Whether it's somebody dying or them pushing you out or the family saying, hey, yo, stop, fall back. They want to figure out how to get back in. And Especially you, and if a person has affection for you, it's not that hard. You just got to get in front of them and have that whole moment again, you know? Right. But when you can't, guess what you become? The biggest enemy. Well, if he's cheated time and time again. Well, if he's cheated on you, clearly he's a dishonest and not a trustworthy person. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't an hour to bash this guy. I mean, I think public opinion is going to have what it is. It's interesting to see how much online um, detest people have for the documentary and for him. And I just did a radio interview with um, Power 106. And they were like, what do you think? And I said, I saw John Legend up here. And I was a f I was taken aback that John Legend was right. shitting on Michael, too. Did you see that? No, but I heard about it. Yeah. So what is your reaction to the people who are quick to take, uh, um, develop public opinion it's, against Michael without having, one, seen all the facts, and two, acknowledge the fact that he's already been acquitted? It, you know, it reminds me back of the same thing I said with Oprah. It's, it's disappointing because people are not being fair. I, I can't understand what's happening. Like, all of a sudden, everybody's jumping on this bandwagon that Michael's this pedophile and this horrible man. It's not who he is, and he's not here to defend himself. He's been gone for 10 years, and this is how his memory is going to to fade, mm -hmm. and it's sad. Do you think, though, do you think that, I, I don't see Michael Jackson's legacy not being strong enough to weather this storm. R. I Kelly, agree yes. No, because this not, is just not, the same damn storm that I he's agree. been dealing with for so long that it's just like. But um, it's not even just it's the same storm. It's the same storm. With the people who were in the life raft with in the in the uh, in the uh, little boat with you going to safety, saying, "Oh, we're gonna make it because right. the storm's not ours, or we're bigger than the storm." These are the people who testified in support of him when there were real allegations. There would have been nothing for that right. little kid to raise his hand and say, "He did it to me too." Well, and that's yeah. I don't. I don't understand. That's the part where I, I don't think people. Yeah, but are then really he tried to break that down about why he didn't. You know, so it's just like you're on a stand. Okay, to. How old was he? Wade literally tried he, to claim like I wasn't strong. Like how, Gavin how old was Wade or, when he see, when he testified though? Do you the, remember? Uh, yeah, well, seven. The, what? The, I don't know exactly specifically, but I, I I can calculate it if you give me a moment. But I'll tell you that he test. Well, he didn't testify, but he spoke on his behalf mm -hmm. because there wasn't an actual court case in '93. Mm -hmm. He spoke on his behalf in '93, saying that nothing ever happened to him. He was like eight when he did that one. Exactly. I think I'm, yeah. Or, or like in '93, he would have been like 11. 11? Oh, okay. Yeah, ten or eleven. Yeah. Um. And then he did it again in 2005. So in 2005, he 21. would have been like 22. He was grown. He was like 21. I like think 23. he said that. Yeah. He could have said 21, but yeah, if he's born in 82 and we're talking 2005, he's about 23 years so, old. So yeah. let's say 21 or 23. Yeah. 21, I owned a home. 23, I owned two homes. I had great careers. I was raising my little brother. Mm -hmm. I was a grown ass man. 23, you couldn't have said, look, I need to come clean right now. He said he was so too afraid to have Michael being taken away from his children and that he yeah, wouldn't have forgiven see, himself because he was so compassionate and all these things. And, you know, that's what how, he was, How old is he right now? 37? He's, he's okay. seven months younger than so me. So 24, 25, 27, 30, right. 32. I mean, none of it makes 34, sense. 34, 36, 37. <laughs> come on now. 
No, it, it, it just doesn't add up to me. But yeah. you know what they say? The best lie has a little truth in it. So if he is lying, for him to talk about the compassion and all the good things about Michael make you believe it even more that, because you're speaking to the qualities of this man that everyone sees. And then you're like, but mm -hmm. that's what I was, but, that, that's what she, I was saying earlier before the interview. There's no way he, they could have came out and said, Michael was the evil man. Exactly. He was this. They didn't say any of that. That's what they makes you feel no, no. But that's like, the thing. They can't say that but this, because right. he's, there's too many testaments of Wade coming out vocally and saying, Michael was amazing. He was this. He was an amazing and he still, father. And he still has. But he, he can't change his tune. Right. He, you can't. Wait. He'd be contradicting every interview he's right. ever done. What right. is a choreographer? What is Someone it? that teaches how, how to dance. They put dance a, moves. They put an entire experience together to entertain you. That's what a choreographer does. So you think yeah. it's a script? I'm saying that he could have. He could not have come out and said, Michael's the boogeyman. And he's been the boogeyman all these years. I just woke up and realized it. Because, you know, there's too many receipts out there him saying otherwise. Exactly. So you have to be able to balance. Uh, to me, it was all bullshit. I, I can't even watch it because... And, you know, people say, oh, well, there are people just married to Ma Michael Jackson because of his music or married to Michael Jackson because this right. image you're trying to hold on to. This is a person, if you go back and you do your homework, YouTube is there, Google's there. This is a person whose whole life was dedicated to bettering the world, bridging the gap between races, bridging the gap between the LGBT community, bridging the gap for kids with um, needs like Ryan White and other people. His compassion <clears throat> was unparalleled. So I just, the, the craziest part and takeaway that I take from it is, as much as I've been a kid who's been in foster care and group homes and shit and, and wanting to really help kids, mm -hmm. I don't want to fuck with them now. Right. I don't even want to help because you don't even want to get, if Michael Jackson could be drug into it, anybody can. You right. Anybody can. Yeah, that's what I was saying, you know, looking back at it, but, you know, you answered that. Would you wish he would have moved differently after the first civil case came, but... Right. Like you no. say, I know, like you said, you are who you are. Yeah. And and especially when you know that he's not done anything wrong mm -hmm. and that's just not who he is. Why should he have to, to change? Why should he not do good for other people? Because he's afraid to. That's just not, he's not going to stop. What's up, y'all? It's time for another Hollywood hookup. And I want to tell you about the Robin Hood app. So what you want to say? Robin Hood is an investment app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission free. Commission free. I'm loving that. Now, while other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees. So you can trade stocks and keep all of your profits. Guys, who doesn't want to keep the profits? Hello. I do. Plus, there's no minimum deposit needed to get started, so you can start investing at any level. It doesn't matter. Wow. The simple, intuitive design of Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. I'm ready to invest right now. View the easy to understand charts and market data and place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. Four taps. Four, one, two, three, four. What? Boom, I made a trade. Oh, that's quick and easy. We liking that. You can also view stock collections such as 100 Most Popular. So get this, with Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your own portfolio. Discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. You don't want to miss this. Ever. Robinhood is giving listeners of Hollywood Unlock Uncensored a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. Sign up at unlock.robinhood.com. Today. So what does your family feel about you coming out and speaking out in support or in defense of Michael? Um. You know, I've been so busy that I haven't spoken to all of them about this specifically, but a lot of them have been reaching out to me saying that they're proud and that they're happy that I'm doing this. They're they're surprised because I am very quiet and very private, um, but they know that I'm passionate about this and that I have to speak on it. Mm -hmm. So they're they're proud of me. What yeah. about Janet? Why has Janet not said anything? You know, I, I don't know. She's I know she's been very busy. I'm not using that as an excuse. I just haven't spoken to her mm -hmm. about this. Mm -hmm. I spoke to her just before the top of the year, and I didn't know about the documentary at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, she may have, but I didn't. So she and I haven't spoken about this specifically. I had heard that she didn't speak out because, well, I had just heard from rumors. People were saying she hadn't sp spoken out because she didn't want to shed any more light on it. So she it's didn't possible. even want to acknowledge it. That was the sentiment with my father and uncles initially as well. Um, when I told my father that I was going to start speaking out, he said, you know, Bernie, this thing is just going to die down. This is this is some more BS that's coming our way. And you know, I don't want you to feel like you have to fight every battle. Mm -hmm. we, we just have to live our life. This People know that this isn't true. But I had this feeling that this was not going to die down. Mm -hmm. And especially once Oprah 
did what she did. You know, like mm-hmm. this just turned a whole nother corner. Do you think Oprah betrayed Michael? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 100%. And I, th- I feel like she betrayed not just him, but, but my family. After he passed, she asked to do an interview with my cousins, Paris Prince and Blanket. So my grandmother invited Oprah over to Havenhurst to yeah, my grandmother's that. house. Mm-hmm. And they had a sit down. My grandmother otherwise would not have allowed Paris Prince and Blanket to do an interview. But because Oprah was being so sincere, she allowed it. And so I feel like we've let her in so many times. And this is how she repays it. And build trust. I mean, because again, exactly. the Jackson family doesn't just let anybody in off the street. Right. Mm-hmm. What would you think Oprah has to gain from supporting a documentary like that? Honestly, I think this is way more political than people realize. Mm. Um, I can't speak for specifically what she's got to gain. I mean, I have my my suspicions and my theories, but I think that this whole thing is a move to tear Michael down. And she she took the necessary steps to do it, and immediate steps. As soon as we knew that documentary was coming out, that interview was lined up with Wade and James. But why would she want to follow up? Why would she personally want to take? Well, I was thinking. Well, I mean, we don't know relationships at the top, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't know if somebody from HBO made a phone call. That's really how the industry works. But what I found interesting is that when you know the documentary is coming, then the hundred million dollar lawsuit comes, and then you bring Oprah out to normalize everything. I mean, I don't know. Just strategically, it just looks weird. Yeah. And then the 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 post that they put on Oprah Magazine, it's time to say goodbye. Like you're setting the precedent of what you want people to think. And you know what's crazy? I've never seen them post nothing like that. Me either. I just thought that that was really, that was really like. It was um, out of context. It was very out of context mm. for Oprah. And we, we posted that and we posted like her comments where people were like, you're a snake. I can't believe you. Michael's rolling over in his grave. You betrayed him. He trusted you. And um, it was. It was interesting because I would not have thought, and this is like during the week where Oprah's stock and Weight Watchers has dropped significantly too. So she had a really bad week, but it's just, yeah. it's weird to see. Um, it's weird to see all of these people come after a dead man. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So what do you think, what do you think one of the biggest misperceptions uh, is of Michael? The, the biggest one of all that he's a pedophile, mm-hmm. that he's an abuser. That's th- what's being told today. And that's the, the, perception that people have. I think that's the biggest one. So what are, what are his kids saying? Have they said anything? I mean, I know Paris had said something about feeling like her acting career would be compromised by this or something like that we reported, but have they spoke out yet? Publicly? No, Mm -hmm. they haven't really spoken out. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't speak for them directly, but I can tell you from my, my perspective on it. They, this is the first time they've had to deal with something of this magnitude about their father. The last time this happened in 2005, they were very young. Mm-hmm. So I don't know that they really experienced the way that people will, will talk about him and the way that people can be. Um, so I think this is hitting them very hard. It's, it's hitting them like a brick wall. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to digest, you know? And they knew Wade and his family. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, that makes it even more difficult. When you know somebody and you know what their motives are and the way that they behave, it makes you even more sick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not some random person off the street that's saying these things. Someone who was very close to, to all of you guys. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry your family's going through that, man. No, thank very you. I mean, you know, we'll make it through. We're very yeah, strong. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to keep fighting. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad yeah. that he has somebody like you who's willing to get out there. and Because I've been waiting to hear from more of the family. I know the brothers have come out and done an interview. Right. Um, and I hope Catherine doesn't have to be subjected to... Uh, this conversation, yeah. you know, what I mean, to have the conversation, defend yeah. your son. Um, but mm-hmm. I would love to. Hear, I would love to hear from Janet. I mean, now that it's out, right. I mean, she does have a really big voice in the Jackson family and in the world. So, we'd love to hear from her. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I wouldn't be surprised though if she feels like Wade isn't worth her time. Mm-hmm. But um, and and you know, again, when you know the truth and you know that Michael is innocent, you feel like I keep beating this dead horse, like I'm fighting this battle. I, this is this should be known. You know what I mean? Like. It's just upsetting. Again, with WikiLeaks putting out all this documentary, there's pages and pages and pages of how Michael is innocent, and we're just ignoring that. And so, okay, one last question. Recently, I saw something pop up online where they're saying that Michael has another kid nobody knows about. Do you know what I'm talking about? I haven't seen that, but I have seen uh, some guy on social media claiming to be his son. Not That's probably Brandon Howard, not him. No, <laughs> not not uh, Brandon. Do you know who Brandon Howard is? I do. Is? I know Brandon. <laughs> Is that Michael Jackson's son? Not at all. 100% <laughs> not at all. He's he's a friend of the family. We've known him for a long time. I'm not sure what, where this narrative came from. He has no relation to the Jackson family. <laughs> they need to just let you be the Jackson family representative. Just go out and just dispel all the rumors. Okay, right. but yeah, but there's this other kid now who's a dancer or whatever. Oh, 
He says he's Michael's son, and there's a picture of him at the funeral, sitting next to the family on the row and everything. I don't know if it's Photoshopped. I don't know what's going on with you the internet these days. Oh I don't know his name. I go, let me find out. There's another Yeah, one. no. Well, thank you for coming on here, and thank you for uh, thank you guys. I really telling your uncle's it. truth. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, we're out of here. Peace. Peace.